You're taking a look inside Kansas politics. Welcome in. I'm Rebecca Chung. Today we're counting down the top political moments of 2023, a year packed with major events in the Kansas legislature. Everything from culture wars to controversial license plates. We're covering it all today. And joining me now is political analyst Bob Beatty and State House reporter for Kansas Reflector Rachel Mepro. Right, Bob, Rachel, great to have you here. Let's get right into it. Starting off with a state law defining biological sex, some calling it Kansas's version of a bathroom bill. So that's mainly because a large part of the debate in the legislature was focused on facilities like bathrooms, locker rooms, but Republicans argue that it's protecting women's rights to privacy in these areas. Now, Republican Attorney General Chris Kobach says this new law means that the state must have state documents reflect sex at birth. That's documents like driver's licenses and birth certificates. A judge in KC though decided that this holds true for birth certificates based on the new law, but a legal battle over driver's licenses is underway in Shawnee County. The ACLU also challenging the constitutionality of this law. So Bob, let's start with you. This is certainly a big moment in 2023, which will carry over into 2024. So give us some insight on where things stand. Yeah, we have to think about the context of this. And, and first, I'd like to say that, uh, you know, maybe I'm not a great political analyst, but I didn't really see we this. We think you're a this, great <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I didn't see this coming to the extent that it came, which is this focus on the transgender uh, issue. But uh, you well know that right at the beginning of the 2023 session, the Republican leadership held a press conference and said, we're, we're going to uh, take on this, this quote unquote woke agenda. And that's when I, when I heard that and saw that, I thought, oh, this session may be very interesting because, you know, where a lot of people thought, hey, we'll focus on taxes or maybe, you know, property issues or, or sort of that, those bread and butter issues. It was this uh, woke agenda that sort of took the forefront right off the bat. And they were true to their word. And, and I sort of call the session the, the quadruple T, which was, you know, uh, 2023, three T's, and then transgender, because there was uh, numerous bills that were passed. So uh, the ban on transgender athletes, uh, that was passed. There was a, a bill concerning inmates in correctional facilities. They had, they had using uh, facilities based on their uh, gender at birth, school trips, and that was a transgender issue. There had to be, schools had to have policies about overnight uh, trips. And, and then there was gender, a gender affirming care bill, a ban on that for doctors that actually uh, was vetoed and was not overridden, but all those other bills were, the vetoes were overridden. And, and yes, the bathroom bill became a big one. So you mentioned the bathroom bill, but there's all these other bills regarding the transgender issue and of course still caught up uh, with court cases. Okay, well, Rachel, you and I have both been following developments in this case closely. What's your take? Yeah, well, so I'm glad Bob brought up this whole lack of definition because with the bathroom bill too, we have seen a really big lack of definition. So for context here, this law is about one page. Nowhere in it does it mention birth certificates or a driver's license. All the legal proceedings we're seeing right now is coming from exactly one sentence. And it says something like, Kansas government agencies can collect vital statistics based on gender assigned at birth. And from this one sentence that mentions, again, nothing to do with birth certificates or driver's license, we see all these legal proceedings. It's like the definition of woke. I've been asking, A, what is the definition of woke? And B, why do we need this bathroom bill? And what is the necessity of this? And none of these uh, questions have we ever really gotten an answer to. Right now, what we're seeing right now is that ban in place for driver license gender marker changes, and that is having a really big impact on transgender Kansans' day-to-day -day life. You know, every time they whip out that driver's license, they're being outed, and right now the ACLU is trying to, again, reinstate that battle because it's a pretty big danger for someone to be outed constantly in that manner. So I think we'll be seeing that hearing in January. But for now, I think two things are clear. Like, this is a vague law, and transgender Kansans are being targeted by this. Certainly going to set the stage for 2024 going on there. And moving on, 
Another issue that made waves this year, abortion. It's next on our list. A court fight is also underway here over a new law that requires physicians to tell patients that a medication abortion can be reversed. Now, the judge in that case is putting a temporary hold on certain parts of the Women's Right to Know Act, a sweeping ruling coming from this judge. Rachel. Tell us a little bit about it. Oh my gosh, we could go on for hours on this alone, but I will try and condense it. So the Johnson County District Judge, he went down hard on the Women's Right to Know Act. This is patchwork legislation, some of it's been in place for about two decades. And he said, I think the exact words were that this act kind of stigmatizes people seeking abortion, and it also instills fear into people who are contemplating this option. So he took out this Medicaid abortion idea, which is based in junk science. There has been no scientific evidence of this, and also the procedure itself sometimes causes like bleeding out in women, so it's super dangerous. But besides that, he also blocked other requirements, such as a certain font size, a 24-hour wait period, and um, a bunch of other things that have been kind of a big deal to abortion providers across the state. So that alone, this temporary blocking is going to be a huge step forward for abortion providers. And then also keep in mind, we're still waiting on the state Supreme Court to make a decision on oral arguments heard back in March on whether or not to overturn their decision to protect abortion rights in the state constitution. So we may see uh, have to wait a little bit for this decision to come down, Bob. Yes, and, and again, the context is that abortion, I wasn't surprised about the, the abortion legislation coming out in 2023 because that's a perennial for Kansas uh, and it, there was a number of actual you know, actual different uh, laws that were passed including more money for um, uh, uh, more for clinics or, or organizations that offer alternatives to uh, abortion and uh, there actually there was one that failed and that was uh, to not allow abortion clinics to get liability insurance so I think we're going to continue to see that in Kansas uh, three four five, uh, abortion related bills even though that of course abortion is legal constitutionally in the state of Kansas. All right. Now another court fight taking place in the state Supreme Court. Justices are weighing voting rights. Should there be protections? Now Attorney General Chris Kobach is asking the court to overturn a court of appeals decision that declared voting a fundamental constitutional right. Rachel, we were both there to hear oral arguments again. What were some of the key takeaways for you? Oh, that was a really interesting court hearing. So to go back to this, this is all based on the whole big lie theory, right? That um, all these laws right now that are being argued about are 2021 election laws that were put in place under the belief that Kansas and the U.S. in general needs tighter elections, that elections are not secure. And again, we as reporters, as political analysts, we cannot stress enough that there is no evidence of voter fraud here in the state. But um, anyway, essentially, Kobach is arguing that these laws that kind of impede they put more restrictions on voting and elections in the state. He's arguing that they don't really infringe upon voting rights. And of course, voting rights advocacy groups are saying that, yes, yes, this does actually pose a challenge to having people vote in the state. So what happens now is if the Supreme Court justices uphold the decision already in place right now, we will see some voting protection rights being put on the same level as other constitutional rights, like abortion, which would give it some way more um, protection than it does have right now. And in terms of real-life consequences, I think that would, in turn, make it harder for more voting laws to be put in place that are perceived to have infringement upon voting and elections in this state. A long-winded way of saying this will decide voting rights one way or the other. All right, Bob, did you want to weigh in there? Yeah, it's just interesting that in, we often think, oh, Democrats versus Republicans. But in terms of the, the election uh, controversies in Kansas, the, the Secretary of State is a Republican, Scott Schwab. And he has advocated now for several years that Kansas elections are safe and secure and has butted heads with some other Republicans. So this is not a Democrat-Republican issue. Actually, in Kansas, it's actually uh, much broader. And, and Scott Schwab, being a Republican, uh, argues that actually some of these laws are not needed, that Kansas elections are quite secure. Okay, we'll have to wait and see what the Supreme Court says. Mm -hmm. Bob, Rachel, thank you. Up next on our list of the top political moments of 2023, state lawmakers left the state house without a major tax package this year. What was left behind and what could happen in 2024? We'll be right back. You're watching Inside Kansas Politics. The story of Grace Med has always been told through its people, both those who serve and those who it is our honor to serve. We meet at the intersection of compassion and vulnerability, bringing health where there was illness and hope where there was despair. Our patients come to us bearing the weight of living in the margins, and we share the love of Jesus Christ with them by providing compassionate quality health care for all their physical, emotional, and spiritual needs. Because health restored is always hope renewed. 
Find hope today by scheduling an appointment with Grace Med. Hi, welcome to Toyota Thon. Thanks. Now that the holidays are over, I'm getting a Camry. <laughs> And we're, we're getting, getting a RAV4 hybrid. hybrid. And I'm getting a Tundra. <sighs> oh, and you're getting a belly rub. And I'm getting a truck. Toyota Thon is on. Get $1,000 finance cash on some of our favorite 2024 Toyota models, like the Camry, RAV4, Corolla, Highlander, Grand Highlander, and even Tundra. Come in today, but you're already here. Toyota, let's go places. Every morning, it's a brand new day. Your wake-up call to a fresh start. And 27 News is working for you to bring you breaking news from overnight, a forecast to help you plan your day, and information that can help make your day easier. We keep you updated on weather conditions for when you're heading out the door and when you're heading home. Whatever your morning routine, we're working to bring you all the local news you need. 27 News, working for you. It's so refreshing to have a station right here in Northeast Kansas that really digs in and supports all the nonprofits. We wouldn't be able to do everything we do without KSNT's support. Thank you KSNT for partnering with us and the Topeka Food Truck Festival. We had a fantastic turnout, exceeded all expectations. Since we've started working with KSNT, we've had great fundraisers. We've broke fundraising records at all three of our events this year. It's a real blessing. Welcome back to Inside Kansas Politics. I'm Rebecca Chung. Our next top political moment for 2023 may have left some Kansans feeling disappointed. Lawmakers closing session without a major tax bill. Republicans push for a single rate income tax or flat tax failed to pass. Now, Bob Rachel, the Senate failed to override the governor's veto of this year's tax package, tying Republicans flat tax to the governor's tax cut proposal for completely eliminating the food tax as soon as possible. Now, Bob, what are some tax cuts that got left behind because of this? Well, b before the session started uh, in the spring, I actually wrote in a column that it'd be criminal if uh, the legislature and the governor couldn't figure out some major tax cuts. So it wasn't criminal. They weren't arrested, but it's pretty bad because Kansas ha had billions, and that's with a B, of surplus money. And, uh, you know, both parties, Governor Laura Kelly and, and the Republicans, seem to want to enact tax cuts, but they, throughout the entire session, uh, they sort of, you know, had a standoff, and when the session ended, there was no major tax cut. So basically, Governor Laura Kelly kept offering different tax cuts, such as rebates, uh, tax cuts on feminine hygiene products or diapers, uh, various permutations, but the Republicans said flat tax, flat tax. And that was important because that's over a billion dollars. That was going to be the cost of it. And in the end, uh, they passed it and the governor vetoed it and no tax cuts. So what, what did they pass? The well, relatively small things like an adoption tax cre uh, credit, you know, waiving fees on concealed carry for guns, um, you know, some tax credit increases for private schools, but nothing approaching what I think many Kansas would have liked. Now, one big one they didn't do was eliminating the food tax even earlier and talk about an instant gratification for Kansans to be able to go to Dillon's or wherever, buy some groceries and say, wow, that's cheaper. That didn't happen. Yeah, and especially heading into an election year. Uh, right, and then I guess the calculation uh, for some of, of the elected officials was, well, we'll do it in 24, they'll forget we didn't do it in 23. Hmm. Well, Republicans are bringing back the single rate income tax plan again next year. The governor says she won't be supporting it. Now, will Republicans have the votes needed to override a potential veto next year? That's the question. They sounded pretty confident that they will in the interim here, Rachel. Uh, let's start with you. Right, so what we've heard is that they're coming back with it, they're coming back strong, and they are unified this year. So we will be seeing it. Um, like Bob said, they did have a veto override. That failed to go through, but it was incredibly narrow. It came down to one vote in the Senate, and that's the only reason why we don't have that flat tax in place right now. And what I really want to emphasize here with this flat tax is this is a plan that will benefit the top earners in this state. I think the first iteration of the bill, it would have been the top 20% of tax earners, or high income earners, and then it would have kind of left below anyone below that out of the scheme. And then by the end of the session, I think it was down to a plan that would be like, what, 
five percent. Five point one five. Yeah, and then it would have lost the state about three hundred thirty million each year in revenue. So again, um, people were saying, you know, this is still a plan that benefits the richest Kansans, and it will probably be that plan again in the next session. We'll be seeing something that benefits top earners more than most people in the state, I would say. But will we be seeing this again? Yes. Will it be within the first days of the session? Yes. And they will be really prioritizing this. We've heard a bunch of times on that. All right, Bob, Rachel, thank you. After the break, we're taking a look at another plan that failed to pass this year. Will it come back for 2024? We have that top political moment up next when we come back. Hurry in and beat the clock. It's the year-end savings event now at The Mattress Hub. Save up to 50% off, including the Sealy Doorbuster deals that fit every budget. Or relax in luxury with free adjustable bases on a huge selection of Beautyrest mattresses. Year-end savings only at The Mattress Hub. You want sports, we've got sports. KU and K-State sports on K-Nation. Highlights, scores, interviews, you name it, we have it. So whether you root for the Jayhawks or the Wildcats, You'll love the coverage we put together for you every single week. We hope you'll join us every Sunday night right after 27 News at 10. As we bring you another exciting week of K-Nation. Sponsored by 988 Suicide and Crisis Lifeline. The number one entertainment talk show. Who even knew? Will make you say... Excellent song choice. What do you think the reason why couples fight? Uh, they host talk shows together. <laughs> Live with Kelly and Mark, weekdays. Hashtag crushing it. I love this job. You got pretty personal and very vulnerable. I just wanted to be honest. Hey! Oh. Oh, this feels so good. My show is fun. We have puppies. <laughs> Weekdays at 3 on 27 KSNT. Get your local news first on Fox 43 News at 9. Local news, weather, and sports. Every night at 9. It's your local news an hour earlier. Fox 43 News at 9. First on Fox. Welcome back to Inside Kansas Politics. I'm Rebecca Chung. This next issue is one that comes up every year, but again, failed to even make it to the floor. A failed Medicaid expansion push from Democrats is our next top political moment of 2023. Now, Bob, Rachel, it's not surprising that Medicaid expansion didn't make it to the floor again this year. Republican leaders have made it clear that this was not on their list of priorities, but could that change with an election around the corner? Bob. Well, this is really interesting uh, politically because you're right, every year it comes up. It came close a few years ago, um, very close. And, but Laura Kelly get, got reelected, the governor, Democratic governor, and she has decided, you know, that I think, I don't read her mind, but from all her actions, she's decided that before her four years are up, she's really going to give it a, the old college try and get Medicaid expansion. But how to do that when the Republican leadership has been vehement, the current Republican leadership, vehement uh, that, that, that they don't want nothing to do with it. And polls have shown what she's got on her side is a lot of medical professionals uh, who uh, worry that the hospitals will close, but also the polls show that most Kansans want it. Uh, every single poll seems to show that. So I, I think what Governor Kelly's uh, strategy is, is that going into 2024, uh, that she wins no matter what. And here's how that could happen. The, again, 2024, the legislature, the Republican legislature refuses. We don't want anything to do with this. And then there's, a, and there's an election in November of 2024. And if that's, that's what she says, okay, voters, that's what I want to run on is Medicaid expansion. And then she can get rid of that supermajority and then in 2025. Now, if the Republicans see this coming and decide they will compromise on some form of Medicaid expansion, she would win again. So I think that's what she's sort of strategizing, but I don't think there's a great hope that it will pass in 2024, but she's certainly putting on a full court press, which tells me this is a long-term strategy. That's why she's doing her Medicaid expansion yeah. tour. And Rachel, 
What could change next year when it comes to this issue? You know, we've seen Democrats come out with their statewide Medicaid expansion tour, as I mentioned, in the interim. Uh, was it a waste of money, though, especially if it's something that may not pass next year or even get to the floor for a vote? Oh, I don't think. It's like Bob said, right? Right now it's about showing a bunch of people, going out to all the communities, saying this will help you, putting that political pressure on. And it is kind of, um, going back to what Bob said here, it is a little bit about the flat tax too. During one of the press conferences, we asked if Republicans would consider some sort of negotiation, like, you know, flat tax for Medicaid expansion. And they told us at that press conference that Medicaid expansion would be their hard red line. They are not going past it. There would be no deal whatsoever. So I don't think we are likely to see compromise, mainly because they have told us we are not going to compromise on this issue. But is it worth it to get out there and raise awareness? I say yes. I think the political impact of that will be pretty significant, even if it doesn't get through. All right, Bob, Rachel, thank you. After the break, we have our final top political moments of 2023. We'll be right back. You're watching Inside Kansas Politics. The Holton Weather Cam is sponsored by Ellis Boys, Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, and Ram. When I look into your eyes, it's like watching the night sky or a beautiful sunrise. Well, there's so much they hold. It's hard to imagine that this powerful, beautiful animal needs our help, but they are being killed for their skin and bones, and their homes are being destroyed. But there is hope. Tigers are at the heart of so many delicate ecosystems. When you protect a tiger, you also protect thousands of species and people that rely on the same habitat. When we protect tigers, we all benefit. Learn how you can make a difference. Every morning, it's a brand new day. Your wake up call to a fresh start and 27 News is working for you to bring you breaking news from overnight, a forecast to help you plan your day and information that can help make your day easier. We keep you updated on weather conditions for when you're heading out the door and when you're heading home. Whatever your morning routine, we are working to bring you all the local news you need. 27 News working for you. This is entertainment tonight. This is the Bible of show business. Weeknights at 6 30. They just ripped the ATM out of the wall. Were you trying to rip me off? These are the stories that impact your life. Weekdays at 2 on 27 KSNT. Welcome back to Inside Kansas Politics. I'm Rebecca Chung. In our final look at the top political moments of 2023, we're bringing in some lighthearted moments that were sure to bring out some strong reactions. Now, Bob, Rachel, the most recent one was the state's license plate fiasco. Let's take a look at the state's first proposal that came out, getting a lot of backlash online. So there it is on your screen now. It got a lot of pushback on social media with responses like, not the best color choice if you're going for a Kansas brand, or black and gold, those are Mizzou colors. The truth is, if you look at it a little close, I can kind of see the dark blue in there. <laughs> so a little bit of what they were trying to go for, but still not cutting it. The governor says the state is going back to the drawing board. So the fact that this made national headlines in Kansas, definitely think it puts it at the top of the political moments for 2023. And also the governor noting that it was a huge divisive issue, I guess, online, Bob. Well, uh, this should be the number one issue, you think? right? <laughs> oh, yes, the license place, because thank goodness we can have some fun. Uh, and I have to admit right off the bat, I kind of liked it. So people now are saying, What's the, who, who is this crazy here. guy? But I think part of that, the two reasons for that. Mm -hmm. One is I grew up in Oregon. So, you know, I've been in Kansas for over 20 years, but I look at colors and I don't think, oh, Mizzou and KU and K-State. I really don't think that way because I guess I didn't grow up here. But people started saying, oh, the colors. I'm like, I didn't even think about the colors. That looked all right to me. So once you talk about the colors. But I also like the retro, which is retro, of course, is very simple. I'm not a big fan of all these busy things and going on, but I'm sure that's what we're going to end up with. So um, it's fun to have uh, an issue that's not life or death. Sorry, you license plate people. That, that's your biggest thing in the world. That's great. 
But you know, there's so so many things that uh, have happened that were super serious and affected lives, yeah. and uh, so it's kind of fun to have an issue. I should say that Governor Kelly was pretty quick to react and say, <laughs> "Okay, let's open this up." <laughs> Uh, but also, right, Rachel, she, um, she tied it into Medicaid expansion. <laughs> <laughs> she told a legislator, hey, if we can open this up to the people, how about, we, you know, basically, she paraphrased, let's have a vote on Medicaid expansion. <laughs> oh, my gosh. That was funny. essentially it, yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, I also started thinking, do other states have the public weigh in on their license plates? Is that a normal thing? Oh. You know what I mean? I don't think so. I Right? I, I don't know if that's a normal thing. So I guess it's pretty special that we have <laughs> the whole yeah. state went in <laughs> on the state license plate. Unless they come, you know, unless the people come mm. up with some dunderhead thing that's even worse. We oh. better <laughs> we power the people, positive, right? Yeah. <laughs> gotta stay positive. You here, said right? you like the design, too. Well, right? here's the thing. I'm also not from here. I'm from New Orleans. And that actually reminded me exactly of the New Orleans Saints football colors, you know, black oh, and so. gold. Oh. You're so right. I was like, wow, nostalgia, you know, home team colors. But as a Kansas <laughs> license plate, maybe not. Maybe the not. not the best decision. <laughs> <laughs> okay, moving on now to an unexpected political pair in 2023. Democratic Kansas Governor Laura Kelly teaming up with Republican Missouri Governor Mike Parson. If you don't remember, here's a quick take of that video that they launched. It was for their Disagree Better campaign. We'll just call you neighbors. And like any good neighbor, we'll continue to disagree on plenty of things. Like barbecue, tax policy, or who's the bigger cheese fan? As the 2024 election cycle heats up, we hope to speak for the entire country in saying, We don't always have to agree, but we can learn to disagree better. Well, I guess if Democrats, Republicans can't agree on policy, they can agree on barbecue, that it tastes good, <laughs> that we all love it. But no, seriously, what do you guys think? Can Republicans and Democrats disagree better in 2024? Well, you know what? I think maybe the holiday spirit will soften everyone's <laughs> no, I think there are just some hardline issues that we won't see any compromise on. But, you know, who knows? Maybe things will change. What's your take? Yeah, uh, it, that's a wonderful, wonderful piece. I think if we ask Governor Kelly what was her top political moment, it would be uh, the Super Bowl, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and the Kansas City Chiefs. So uh, that's a great moment for the two governors. And, you know, being a governor, it, you're supposed to, you're governor of the entire state which makes these governors know that it's difficult to work with legislatures because each legislator comes out of his own, his or her own little district and uh, makes it more difficult for them to think for the entire state. But we can disagree better. It's just a matter of will, so maybe, maybe a new year. Okay, we'll have to see the new year. Well, Bob, Rachel, thank you again. And that was your look inside Kansas politics. If you want to keep up to date on all things Kansas politics, then follow us on social media. Follow us on Twitter at In Kansas Politics and on Facebook. Just search Inside Kansas Politics. We'll also post the full video on YouTube. Just search KSNT News. And check KSNT.com slash inside dash Kansas dash politics for past episodes. If you have a story you want Kansas State legislators to hear or topics you think we should cover, let us know. You can email us at IKP at KSNT.com. We'll see you right here, same time, same place. Have a good day.